as far as keeping our streets safe, public service, public safety. We are, we are finally recouping as far as the, the right amount of police officers given, given the races that they just had. So if there is a robust say, uh, uh, a police department, right, there also has to be in turn a nice outreach into the community. The one community, one voice um, uh, is, is happening. Those that going into places like Tarrington, trying to build a relationship. Um, there are more officers of color being hired. I feel like this is all going in the right direction, but we can't do more. Many years to improve the city. I know it's been said here tonight that there's been no economic development. I just want to mention to you, last couple of years, even through a pandemic, Virginia Metal Treaty spent $5.7 million to expand. Cloud Fit Software, $9.7 million. Wood Spring Suites, $9.3 million. Flowers Bakery expanded $29 million to so get all your baby bagels from them. River Ridge Mall, $57 million. Bosch Alone, $35. And just recently, Electronic Design and Manufacturing made an announcement they were expanding on 11,000 square foot property. So there is things, there's things going on. There's progress being made. We can look at doom and gloom, and we chip a little, the sky is falling, but the sky isn't falling. But it's going to take all of us, not just the seven members sitting on council, whoever they may be, but this entire community to come together. That needs to be where our focus reactive, proactive. 70% of young men in America that don't receive a high school equivalency will wind up in the penal system before they're 35 years old. I'm going to say it again. Federal statistics, it doesn't matter if you're white, black, Asian, native, or, or, or whatever, if you have not received a high school equivalency, there's a 70% chance that you're going to be in the penitentiary maybe before you're 35 years old. So there's a clear connection between truancy and recidivism. If we can wrap around our children and get across the stage, they're less likely to fall into a life of crime. There's a reactive and a proactive approach. But I actually had a father call me this week, and it was horrifying. Because a boy just decided one day to go into the star family. Well, she was using her own school. And that shouldn't be happening in our public schools. We need to make the school bathroom safe. Period. For everybody. Okay? Everybody. Nobody deserves to get attacked. Nobody should be peeped on. We need to make school bathrooms safe for everyone. And we absolutely need to protect our young women in our middle schools and high schools. Absolutely. I've had complete strangers walk up to me and say, you make me feel. It's the way we live among people. And I have a saying, if you can't honor the Lord, then it don't do it. And that is blessing that. We love one another. Because when we fight, eat each, eat each other up over, over small things, we get in trouble. Like I said, I'm here to represent the citizens of Lynchburg. I want to represent them 100%. So part of it is actually, so part of protecting civil rights is protecting the right to vote, making sure that it is accessible, that it is fair, that it is uh, reputable, so that we are, are confident that we can move forward as a nation. And then beyond that, there are all sorts of other um, particulars that are uh, challenging right now. We know that communities of color struggle in ways that honestly just, I am a straight white male. And that means none of my civil rights are at risk. But that is not true for others. There's a lot of work, I'll, I'll keep it with my time. There's a lot of work to make sure that, that those who are not like me have their rights protected, uh, even when they're under assault.